uh, with your book A Path to Wisdom you also promote your uh, TG, uh, TGS Absolutely. method evolutionary method yes yes uh, can you tell me more about this method? absolutely TJ's evolutionary method was born as a result of all the wisdom that I had collected for many years and simplified it in a five step method that can be expanded to take people at the deepest part of themselves when they truly number one acknowledge who they are but also acknowledge their problems acknowledge their limiting beliefs, acknowledge their fears, acknowledge exactly how they are. Because when we don't acknowledge that, it's almost like a train that you embark in which everything is interconnected and therefore your life cannot be disconnected. But train can have a lot of negative energy which can impact you. So when you come to a space of true acknowledgement, you acknowledge your soul's voice. That space can only be created when you become still, when you create a silence in yourself, when your mind is in a space where it's almost shut down. Through meditation, through the right coaching, people can come to that space from which then they can listen to the true voice. The second part of this methodology, it's about coming to a space of love. What stops people from loving? Well, many things. One is the mind and the way we are brought up and the way we associate love. And there's a big difference between love and control. What I have seen from traveling around the world and what I have seen in my own family, in our own culture, and also in many cultures that I lived, uh, disempowered people tend to have massive control towards themselves and other people in the name of love. And there's a big difference when the love within ourselves is radiated outside of ourselves without focusing and directing it to people in the name of love. I'm talking about love which has no conditions. I'm talking about love that basically heals your entire body. And when I look in the society and having overcome the many physical uh, and emotional issues that I had in my body, where doctors and science could not heal me. Through love and through healing, I healed every part of my body, including lower back pain, including heart murmur, including pneumonia, including tennis elbow, migraines, you mentioned it, I had it. You can only imagine the illnesses you can have after the war and being on the streets of London. So with that love, having reconnected myself to the power of love, that love healed every cell of my body. So bringing people to that space of love, a path to wisdom, shows a very simple method that people can digest, they can go within and question themselves. So through you, Excuse me, do you really think that every single person in the world can heal himself uh, the way you do? With all my heart. I have zero doubt about that. What prevents people from healing themselves, it's all what I've discussed earlier which is their limited beliefs about who they are. Our body has intelligence built in. It's God-given intelligence that every child is born equal. What makes us different is the culture, the society, and all the programming that we take on board. So if for you, right now, we're brought up in, let's say, China, you'll be interviewing me in Chinese, and you'll be giving me your Chinese culture with the very polite ways of being everything else. So therefore, we have the ability to shift, transform, and change, and heal. Whether we exercise that choice, and whether we are strict with the process that we need to go through, and we follow it, and we commit to that, and we invest in that, that's a different question. I invested more than a million in my personal education. So everything I worked, I invested, and now I'm ready to give that to the entire world. You've been brought up in, in Macedonia and in Albanian uh, culture and now you're more than 20 years living here in London. Uh, how would you describe this difference? How, how difficult was for you to adapt in, in, uh, in British culture, let's yeah. say? And uh, yeah, how would, what, how would you describe the problems that we face 
down there like you've been there you said that you already uh, have learned so many stories uh, about it how how would you describe uh, the way I would describe it it's when I look at the comparison between many cultures including our culture and including the British culture one of the uh, biggest gifts for me is to live in England and it did not come as being lucky because I believe in creating your luck I believe in getting up every morning and do something that you can change your life but Britain has given me the freedom to learn to basically be myself and accept myself for who I am and has given me access to so many wonderful wonderful people and people who actually are there my teachers and people who have helped me shape my path and have helped me overcome the many limited beliefs that I come from especially during the process of former Yugoslavia where we lived in a communist culture let's say an example was every house had to have a Tito's uh, picture for instance so a lot of children were brought up in a very different way so our mind has the ability to adapt and I'm very grateful for my family my grandparents, my mom and dad, my sisters and all the friends that I have in Macedonia for basically being part of that mirror that I needed to reflect and to learn and grow both through positive experiences and okay. through negative experiences. The biggest problem is most people want only the positive and therefore they live in the duality of the mind and this can cause a lot of separation and what I see every time I come to Macedonia I see many people are still in the game of the duality of life. You mean they have price of identity? Yes. And with that there is no acceptance in themselves. When we don't accept ourselves, there's no way I can accept you, there's no way I can accept our neighbors, there's no way I can accept anybody else. And having gone through a lot of war and having gone through so much separation between people, it, it has given me so much food for thought how I can help these people, how I can help my own people in Macedonia, how I can help the leaders, how I can help the families, how I can help the children. And one of the aims of as the book goes around the world and been translated in Albanian, Macedonian, Turkish and all the different countries around the world, it's create an Abo and Ago, which is in the name of my parents, foundation in Macedonia to help orphan children who suffered from war as well as emotionally abused children to help them empower them so they in turn can inspire everybody around them in Macedonia and create a life which is peaceful, abundant, joyful and happy. Um, how would you explain your crystal therapy? Mm. That's you a, mentioned it tonight. Absolutely, that's a very good question. Uh, crystal therapy came from John of God. John of God is one of the trans mediums, the number one trans medium in the world. And it's 50 spirits who operate through this man. You have to see it to believe it. And I had the pleasure to spend six weeks with him. The calling of the spirit world has been since I was a kid. So therefore I had many visions and many dreams and I met all the spirits way below, uh, before I went to Brazil. I went to Brazil with a private client to do a lot of healing and he excelled through six weeks period and also for me to work with the spirits world down there to the higher realms and different dimensions of the spirit world and understand better the work that I do and meeting all of those spirits which to most unique work which for most people who have not seen it it's almost unbelievable but there's a whole spiritual hospital that is there in a different dimension operates that people go get operated and come back and I've experienced that with my clients where basically we were taken to different dimensions and gone through a lot of healing and brought back there's been people like Oprah down there who donated the toilets and donated the whole thing and they've created the most amazing miracles. It's just a miracle thing. And I also I was selected to be the son of the Casa because my spirit is a very old spirit and it's connected to King Solomon and the energy of Christ and the energy of Muhammad and the energy of the Buddha and the many spiritual leaders who've been on our planet who've inspired people to love.
be honest, this uh, could, in the same time, sound uh, surreal for average minds. Um, tell me, uh, do you think that everyone can understand and everything that you do can touch to everyone's heart? Or you think that uh, 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 fear and lack of education and information makes us feel confused? Hmm. First, firstly, I would like to uh, change your words. One is not about thinking, because thinking will change. So therefore, it's not about me thinking, it's I'll actually know. And the knowing comes from my heart and comes from the wisdom which is embedded in my every single cell. And the wisdom that I've collected through working with some of the top healers around the world and the wisdom that is there for my spirit. So thinking, it's not what I do. It's the knowing that I speak from my heart. And when each person comes to that space of knowing, without question of a doubt, they too will know what I know. You referred also to the teachings of Lao Tzu. Mm -hmm. Who else did you use as a reference for writing your book? Ah. As a reference, I did uh, use uh, all of my teachers and I work with um, uh, Dr. John Martini, one of the top coaches around the world, who I absolutely love and adore. As a healer, my biggest healer has been Martin Brofman and uh, he's the f founder of uh, the chakra system, which I'm writing my second book about, about the energy. And I worked with Martin for many years and Martin Brofman has inspired me to accept myself for who I am. So in my journey to acceptance, Martin played an important part. And the body mirror system of healing, it's a unique system that can help you shift your energy and heal your body, your mind and your spirit. The other person is Barbara Brennan, then Anthony Robbins, I've worked with him as well, then basically there are so many other people, including the teachers of the Buddha, including the teachings of Quran, including the teachings of the Bible. So I have richly collected a lot of wisdom and I've studied many theologies and also studied quantum physics to understand the difference in science and spirituality and bring them together. So you're something between the Eastern wisdom, mixing it with Western uh, psychology. Absolutely. Could I, could I say it like that? Absolutely. So basically, uh, the book is a synthesis of both the Western psychology about how our mind works in our body and our emotions and the Eastern methodologies of understanding the chakras and understanding the body as an energy system. And you bring those together and you create miracles that I'm talking about in my book. Tony, did your family support you? about what you do in, in life and how difficult uh, was for you to explain them about what you do because this is not an ordinary profession especially for, for people that are coming from uh, down there. Absolutely, there have been many challenges in my family and I think you know everybody has their own challenges in their family but with all my heart I love my family and I know they love me and they're extremely proud and as you notice, half of my family is here with us tonight. Uh, w when it comes to my work, my family are really looking forward to read the book in Albanian. Because the uh, majority of my understand. family yeah. cannot understand. Because of my work, it's all in English and my wisdom, I speak of it in English. The book will be translated in Albanian, so I can answer that question once the book is read in Albanian. Okay. How can you measure your success? How, mm. uh, how, how satisfied are you up to now? Well, absolutely. <laughs> so I hope you saw the event tonight. And um, my success is seeing so many people aligning themselves to their heart's wisdom and creating everything from place of love. So the people you met tonight, are 80% uh, of these people, they work privately with me. So I work with CEOs and uh, entrepreneurs and celebrities and they fly me around the world to work with them privately. 
So my success is can measured. You, excuse me. Can you explain us? You mentioned several times that you work with them. And you have yes. a private session. How they look like? Like it's uh, it's basically like talk. They they discuss about their problems. Then mm -hmm. you give them advices, or you are the person who helps them discover themselves. Absolutely. Coaching is not about giving advice. Coaching is almost for you to be simply holding a space. And my work is more than a coach. My work goes beyond coaching, beyond cognitive behavior therapy, beyond NLP. I've studied all of those to perfection. So my coach is unique methodology. So different people have different needs. If I were to take an example of a client, let's say one of the top CEOs from Microsoft or the CEOs from Deutsche Bank or stuff like that, they come to me to become better leaders. So therefore, so you empower them, empowering and enabling them to simply be leaders so that their choices and the decision they make throughout their working life are embedded in the whole organization so the people are nurtured. Unfortunately, today we live in a society whereby it's very money driven. So therefore, a lot of people measure themselves through money. How can you measure your success? Mm. I mean, how satisfied are you up to now? I'm extremely satisfied. And first of all, I'm satisfied. I'm in the greatest health. So my success comes from the peace I have within myself. And the amount of love I give to people. And every person I work with, they walk a path that brings them and reconnects them to the infinite wisdom of love. How would you describe your daily lifestyle? Is My daily Tony's, lifestyle? Yeah. That's Who is Tony question. out, of, out of, uh, the, out of the healing, out of the coaching? Who is Absolutely. Tony outside of that? Tony outside of that, it's a, it's a son, first of all. It's a brother, it's a friend, and it's a man who loves lives. And he loves everything around life. So I love dancing and I'm doing a lot of singing, so sort of I have my private coach, so I'll be recording my song, A Call for Love, which you heard tonight to be the anthem that will be shown in all of my events around the world. And he loves salsa dancing, he adores food. So, you know, I say the, the way to man's heart is through his stomach. So Tony loves that, he loves culture, he loves a lot of reading, he loves to travel quite a lot, and um, he loves nature and I love connecting with nature. And London is a place where there's infinite things to do. So Tony at heart is a baby. He's a child who's hungry to experience life in every second of life. What do you, do, what do you miss from Gostivar? Do you miss anything here? <laughs> That's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> because London is a very big city, you got everything. But do you miss something from Gostia, from your birthplace? From my birthplace, of course, I miss the culture and I miss the people. And uh, I would love to get engaged more, uh, to create some workshops and educational programs and partner up with some key people in Macedonia and help them also shift and change and with universities, with government and with TV and celebrities. and really get Macedonia to a place where it needs to be. Macedonia is to be a great nation, and uh, now we're going through a lot of struggle. And my own people, Albanian people, I'm extremely proud of to be Albanian. First of all, I'm proud to be a human being. The nationalities and all of that in my state of evolution does not matter anymore, because I believe we are all one. So what I miss from Macedonia, I miss Mavrovo. <laughs> I miss coffee, <laughs> I miss Gostiva, I miss my family, I miss my friends down there. Um, I miss Pet Tumchenkat. Okay. I miss, <laughs> I miss Ohrid and uh, I miss nature and I miss my mom's love. Yeah. Um, the name of my show is Carpe Diem or Size the Day, Catch the Day. How important is for you to uh, to live the moment and how would you describe the philosophy of Carpe Diem? Oh, brilliant, that's so brilliant. So it's actually, it's I breathe and live every moment in life because each moment it's a new opportunity for you to shift and change. Each moment it's for you to change direction 
and create a life that you want to create. Each moment you never get back. So therefore, it's 100% I live my life from moment to moment. So I do not do things that I will later regret. I have made a few mistakes in my life and I'm gratefully sorry for that. But but they mistakes weren't mistakes. Mistakes are the biggest the teachers. Absolutely, in our lives. absolutely. So the mistakes for me are the learning that I had to go through for me to come sit in this space and empower not only Britain but people around the world, and including soon in Macedonia, Kosovo, Albania, Turkey, Greece, and Croatia, and uh, Serbia, and you know Slovenia, all the places where where I grew up. Uh, Tony, what after your Book launch. After my book launch. Yeah. My first trip is in Lanzarote. So therefore I'm working there with a few private clients and also I'm uh, collecting a few top people who will be part of the workshop and part of a unique program around the world that basically people will go through. And then I'm actually talking at the Body, Mind, Soul Festival. So I'm talking there for an hour. I have a special slot in there. It's one of the biggest Body, Mind festivals in, in the world. Talking about effortless flow and abundance creations, which most people have problems with. Money, the basics, the security, money, job, and home, and everything else. So, and then I'm talking to a conference about leaders, and leadership, which is led from the heart. And the difference from an ego leader-driven leader to heart-centered leadership. And then I'm off to Germany, and I have a book promotion in Israel, and therefore I'm already lined up for Japan. Okay. So, <laughs> going around the world. Yeah. Tony, thank you very much. Thank I you. personally wish you uh, good luck and all the best. With thank you very much. I'm really happy and proud at the same time that I was part of this uh, book launch and I really congratulate for uh, the job you do. I wish you will inspire as many Albanians and as many Balkans and uh, nations all around the world. And Thank you very much. Thank Once you, again. the Falemenderit, the Falemenderit Youth Vejuga.